the Hail Varsity Radio Saturday Morning Show. Strap yourselves in. Here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt. Y'all don't even know he was a virgin until he's 28, and now, roll tide. And Mark Cranach. Time has come for someone to put his foot down. And that foot is me. Welcome to it, Weekend Editions here. It's Hail Varsity Radio, powered by Cornhead Lager. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Our dear friend, Mark Cranach, is on assignment. He is out on the West Coast. I don't know if he is searching for mushrooms, quarterbacks, defensive tackles. He's just on a breather. Bless his heart. Elijah Herbal in studio. Better late than never, but we're here. <laughs> I made it on- eventually. <laughs> on Saturday morning, and you're welcome to join us. We love doing this every Saturday morning on the Hale Varsity YouTube channel, the Hale Varsity Radio Twitter feed at HVarsity Radio, Facebook and Twitter for KFOR. We'll check in with Brandon Vogel, and Vogues have been dealing with some illness during the week, so I think he's going to be ready to play a little hurt today, or we may or may not have him, Aha, just as... We speak of the devil. He uh, he joined us. Gary Sharp also going to be with us. And uh, Vogues, we got a bit of a false start this morning. Yeah, but we're alive and well, and we are going. How are you doing? How is the Brandon Vogel tracking going for one Kyle McCord with Counter Reed, my friend? It's a <laughs> it's a McCord weekend, bud. Yeah, I've, I'm I'm doing okay. Uh, coming off the 10 day DL, basically, uh, feels like due to some illness. But <clears throat> so I've kept one eye towards the the quarterback uh, goings ons, I guess. Um, I, I would not have expected Nebraska to be much of a factor in the race for McCord. Um, I think it if they were to land him, it says some interesting things about kind of the future of the offense. I think a couple weeks ago on the show, we talked about, you know, does Nebraska need to have the QB run element? And if you go this way, um, you you really don't, um, which makes things pretty interesting. And then of course, you know, he, he, he wasn't JT Barrett or, um, you know, any of those other Ohio state quarterbacks in his first year as a starter, but still a plenty good player. Brandon Vogel with He's, us here, a weekend edition of Hale Varsity Radio. And Brandon, yeah, I'm kind of with you here. This is a, a unique Saturday morning edition just to let the people know. It's 2.45 in, and we already got Brandon answering questions. So definitely a different Saturday morning. But that's the beauty of this stream-only Saturday morning mm-hmm. show. We go whenever. People say we're late, but hey, is time is really just a, you know, a, a concept anyway. So... Late is only in your own mind, but no, we are definitely very late this morning. It's very unique, but Kyle McCord is the flavor of the weekend, and I want to get your thoughts if Kyle McCord is the guy, which there seems to be some momentum moving in that way, even from last night into this morning uh, with rumors. Is he in Lincoln? Is Fleming in Lincoln with him? Don't really know, but if he is the guy, what kind of statement does that make for Nebraska, even if... It's not him. It could be Ward or, or Will Howard. Really, there's a, a a top group of guys Nebraska is going after. What does that top group, specifically looking at McCord, but any of those guys, what does that mean for Nebraska perception wise if they're able to land one of those guys? I mean, it's 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 definitely a positive, <clears throat> and I think it's a positive in a specific way. Nebraska, at the end of October, looked like it it might be one of those programs that had a season that all of the lookers on people like us, media fans could at the end of the year say, Oh, watch out for Nebraska next year. It didn't end up that way. Um, losing your last four and missing the bowl game kind of meant that Nebraska was just like, Oh, it's just, it's still Nebraska. Um, I don't believe that's the case. Uh, I think there, there was, there was progress and in landing a transfer quarterback of that caliber, um, when everybody is is out there, you know, looking for a quarterback for the most part, um, <clears throat> would say that I think the football piece of it, what the coaches are able to say to players who have played at this level before, is is resonating. Brandon Vogel with us here. Counter read, counterread.com. 
is uh, where you find Vogues. You can subscribe to him and, and Aaron Sorensen. They do a fantastic job biweekly uh, newsletters, YouTubes. I mean, it's uh, got all the coverage for you. So I, I'm trying to look at this, and here's what I believe. I believe that Nebraska had some really – Nice improvement. I think Nebraska uh, is also in that little that that remorse neighborhood about not getting to a bowl game as as well as the young guys played and improved and developed on the defensive side and even the offensive side. I know you didn't have any all Big Ten skill dudes, but from what I saw specifically from a Lloyd, uh, that that is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, what I saw from Emmett. Uh, Johnson is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, and the, the missing piece here was quarterback for Nebraska. And to go all in and make that determination, okay, uh, you've got Chuba on one hand, and then you've got these fantastic options in the portal with a Will Howard, a Sam Levitt, a Shapin, who I know committed elsewhere last night. You still got McCord and, and Cam Ward. Um, for Nebraska to look themselves in the mirror and say, I think this offense is a really talented quarterback away, like most offenses, from being from good to, or, or getting to that good, not good to great, but just getting to that really good uh, part, the, the complementary part, where your defense and your offense can actually help one another. And your offense is scoring 28. I'm not sure in a one-off year that I'm, I'm that upset about a non-mobile quarterback. Give me a guy that isn't a statue statue, and I don't think McCord is a statue, but he's just different, Vogues, than, than these other quarterbacks or what Nebraska's got. I'm curious to get your take here on the, the mobility factor and Nebraska's run game health overall if there's no or minimal quarterback run. Yeah, um, it's it's interesting. You know, I, I'm planning to look at this a little bit in January, um, not about McCord specifically, but just about kind of Nebraska and quarterbacks. But, but I think it's safe to put it this way. If, if McCord ends up at Nebraska, he's not going to lead the team in rushing. And that's what Nebraska has had for the vast majority of the past, you know, well, most of the years since joining the Big Ten. You look at the Tanner Lee year, um, the first year of Frost when Tobias Zigbo went over a thousand. You know, there's probably a couple others sprinkled in there, but it you'd be moving from that kind of quarterback uh, essentially, and I think it could be interesting. Um, you know, does it help the run game? It does if you're you're really strong in the passing game. If you're if you're able to complete uh, a completion percentage that. Nebraska doesn't often hit with, with those, those other type of quarterbacks. Um, so there's, there's, there's a lot of ways to, to kind of slice the Turkey here uh, in terms of just moving the ball overall. And the one, the one thing I would say, um, you know, an upgrade at quarterback, I think is, is pretty important. I also think uh, next step on that is I'll, I'll be very interested in what Nebraska tries to do. At, at receiver, um, if McCord could bring his high school teammate Marvin Harrison Jr. with him, that would that would help things a lot. Um, but if not, uh, if he does decide to go to the NFL or stay at Ohio State, uh, which both seem like heavy favorites, uh, we'll see we'll see what they can do um, because that would be that would be the other thing I would think about with McCord. Um, you know, numbers look pretty good. Uh, it, at a possibly high standard at, at Ohio State, sure, maybe a couple of them were off pace. Uh, Nebraska doesn't have the receivers right now that Ohio State does. What is Nebraska's reality with the, the second year, the urgency level? Um, how urgent does Nebraska need to be? What does year two need to look like? And I'm not asking this in a well, you know, Matt Rule, the, the old shot clock's winding down. I'm not going. That's not why I'm asking this. I think Matt Rule's a guy that's going to gonna build and win in Lincoln. I'm asking it because the Big Ten's hard, and it's been hard for Nebraska. And it gets a hell of a lot harder next year. So 
does what what they seemingly are going to bring in at quarterback and McCord, where does that put Nebraska in the Big Ten pecking order, in your opinion? There's a lot of there's a lot of questions, but I mean, quarterback's been a, a big one. Yeah, I I think they'll <clears throat> they're going to start in the vast middle, the growing middle of of the Big Ten. Uh, I think to start 2024, which you know is probably you figure. 500, seven and five, somewhere like, like as a starting point. Um, I think a quarterback like McCord or, or somebody who's close to an equivalent uh, raises that ceiling a little bit. But, you know, there's, there's, so Nebraska basically gave up 18 points and averaged about 18 points or 19, somewhere in that range. Um, if you're going to stick at allowing 18 points and you can, you can get that offense to 25. Um, which would still be a below average scoring offense in college football. Um, seven points a game better on average than your opponent. Then you're talking eight, nine wins. Um, and, I, and I think that's doable um, for Nebraska. We'll see how the rest of the, the kind of transfer window here and early signing finishes up. But there's, it, it's interesting, you know, right now it doesn't feel to me like there's, uh, a ton of outside pressure creating urgency for for year two that said you're you're only you go know, five and seven again and maybe you get unlucky um whatever whatever happens like at that point you can have the most patient ad in the country um but it's, at, to, at a certain level it's kind of beyond their control um because it's 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 public opinion and when people get a little bit antsy and nervous uh, things ratchet up pretty quickly. So I don't foresee that happening, but you just got to realize like you're, you're 12 more games away from, from being in that spot. It's Brandon Vogel with us here. He's off of the uh, IR, if you will. And with us here, a Saturday morning edition of Hale Varsity Radio Power and Through. And Brandon, with the rumors swirling, got a text last night from a buddy that essentially asked the question, if McCord's the guy for Nebraska and Vince chimes in and asks, is McCord officially committed to Nebraska? That answer is no, but there's plenty of rumors for this weekend about McCord and his interest in Nebraska. And one of the questions that I got last night was, what weapons does McCord have if he comes to Nebraska? Why would he want to come here? I want to get your thoughts on that, on what this offense is under McCord. Because clearly, Husker fans want an upgrade at the quarterback spot. I think McCord would be that. But a quarterback does not make your offense. What weapons do you see that Nebraska currently has? Where do they still need an upgrade? Should they bring in McCord? What's your your take on the offense overall outside of the quarterback position? Yeah, um, it's kind of a key question. I think um, off the top, you know, I I think Thomas Fedoni is is where you start. Um, saw enough from from him, you know, not just this season in in playing, but everything he's done to get to the point where he could could have the season that he had. And I feel like it just kind of scratched the potential of, of what he's capable of. So that's a pretty good starting point. Um, we saw, we saw Lloyd um, with, with the big plays feel, feel like that's an accomplished quarterback. That's, that's a guy that you can find more often feel good about Malachi Coleman. Um, you know, now, like I said, none of these guys are, are like the Ohio state wide receivers he had this year. Few, few programs have that. Um, so there's, there's still going to be some, some development there question then, you know, I'm not sure at running back, I guess that's, that's the one where I have more questions. Uh, does Gabe Irvin come back? Does he stay healthy? Uh, when he's been healthy, he, he looks like a big 10 back. Um, Ramir Johnson at times has, but never seen it put all the way together. I, I feel good enough about Emmett Johnson where he could be helped by, by Kyle McCord and a, and a more kind of efficient passing game. I don't know in the traditional definition uh, that I think you're talking about, Elijah, is he the weapon that helps helps McCord out? It's just too early to say at this point. Reddit Vogels with us. Vogels, we'll get your take on the uh, the volleyball showdown later today against Arkansas in a moment. And when we look at, at the state of the Nebraska offense, let's go to the offensive line. Let's keep applying this. Kyle McCord factor to two other parts. And I mean, are we looking at it? Sats offense being 
shotgun or pistol or just under center, three wide, one back, two tight, eye formation. I mean, how how much does the offense vary uh, and how multiple can it get? Uh, with and, and, and be good at being multiple. Um, the, the, the short answer or the question is, is Nebraska going to be better at the offensive line to be able to run the football, not just pass protect, but from a balance standpoint, Nebraska's uh, run at rushing success, a lot of it was dependent on the quarterback run game last year. Yeah, I, th- I think they could be. Um, I, I think the offensive line improved in, in year two under Iola. Um, you got a couple of all-conference caliber players coming back, um, and they've, they've got pretty good depth there. So I think it could be one of those where – if we're going to assume with like this kind of quarterback and additional development at pass catcher that the passing game's a little bit more threatening, um, that might do as much to help the run game as, as the O-line's ability on its own. But I think both could be improved. It's Brandon Vogue with us here. Sorry, Schmitty. I thought you had a follow-up question. That's on me. Uh, oh, and, and whenever you, you look at, year two going into year three under Donovan Rilo with that offensive line. Do you have concerns about the mobility of a guy like Kyle McCord playing behind that offensive line? What did you see? Because I, I think there was a noted improvement in the, the, the rushing attack from this Husker offensive line, from the pass protection from this offensive line, but I still don't think they're ready in the way that Matt Rule wants an offensive line to be ready, and especially when you compare it to the rest of the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, I of those two, and I agree, I thought both were improved. I thought the bigger improvement was probably um, in, in pass protection. It, it, it's Nebraska's passing numbers this year are so hard because they attempted the fewest passes of anybody in the country outside of the service academies. So they just didn't throw it a lot. Um, that said, you know, <clears throat> I think for a quarterback like McCord um, – yeah, he may not make guys miss the way a Jeff Sims or really uh, Jeff Sims or Harburg uh, may have been able to, but uh, you can you can avoid sacks with just a little bit better pocket presence, a little bit better understanding of the game, a little bit better, a little bit more experience. I mean, Sims was was plenty experienced, but it's just a it's just a different kind, and it, you know it seems really strange because we haven't seen it at Nebraska in in quite a while, but. I'd be pretty interested to watch it play out. I mean, we saw it kind of with Tanner Lee, but that season got wonky early, and it never kind of felt like the truest look. Pretty quickly here, I want to go back to a comment from Eric about 10 minutes ago in the stream, saying McCord will be able to play the kind of offense that Sat wants to run. want to first get your thoughts on that. Should McCord be the guy? And then then as a follow-up question to that, what spot on the offense – outside of the quarterback position is currently the biggest holdup in your opinion, in terms of Marcus Satterfield's ability to run the offense that he wants to run. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think <clears throat> absolutely he can, he can run the, the offense that, that Satterfield wants. Um, you know, nope. I don't know. I, it's hard to remember, but I was certainly surprised when Spencer Rattler ended up at South Carolina, <laughs> um, you know, a couple, a couple of years ago. And Spencer Rattler, you know, is a player who, who, who can be mobile, but that's kind of not his factory default. Um, so we've kind of seen, seen Satterfield take this, this route before um, in terms of the biggest, the biggest holdup. I, I mean, it, it, it's tough to break it for me between receiver and quarterback because they, they help each other and they hurt each other. Um you just gotta you gotta be able to there were throws there to be had. You gotta be able to make the throws and complete the passes. And and how much do you put on that put of that put on the quarterback there? How much of that is on the guys catching the balls? It's it's a little bit of both. But I think so broadly speaking, um, the biggest holdup uh for as, as quote unquote well as Nebraska run, ran the ball, like the total numbers ended up looking good. But it was kind of a it was a, a fight. I think most of the time, I think the biggest holdup is the passing game. Brandon Vogel with his counter read, and Walter chimes in. This is a monster holdup as he is 
laying out the turnover margin. Presumably you get a quarterback. Uh, is anyone worried that Sat kills quarterbacks everywhere he's been? Rattler, Sims, he can call plays, but he needs a quarterback to understand his focus. Brandon asked that question. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some question marks about Sat out there. Uh, but you get this. I mean, it's it is a great situation, presumably for Nebraska to have this quarterback and uh, be this deadly in a good way on on offense. Vogues, what's your take on Arkansas? Quickly, a thought on volleyball today. We'll get to Gary Sharp in a moment. But Vogues, also anxious to hear about Counter Reed and what you guys have been up to. Yeah, um, so as you mentioned earlier, it's a bi-weekly newsletter from Aaron Sorensen and myself. Uh, yesterday, I spent some time griping about college football, as I think uh, everybody had the chance to do after after last Sunday through to now. So felt good to get that out of, out of the way. And now we can focus squarely on, on volleyball for the immediate days ahead. Um, Arkansas? Super impressive team. This was a pretty good year in the SEC. A lot of years at that that conference is kind of Kentucky and Florida and whatever else. But you saw Arkansas and Tennessee actually tie for for second in in the SEC. And you know, Rich Kern does a, a volleyball power rankings similar to what we see in all the other sports. It's just not as many people pay attention to it. Of the eight teams remaining, Kentucky was eighth and Arkansas was ninth. And that's the only one that flipped. Uh, all the other top seven teams are in. So that's what Nebraska is looking for. They'll have a size advantage. They have an advantage defensively. That said, Arkansas has a really good setter. Uh, Cook mentioned this week about the the quick tempo. So I think they'll 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 put the test to Nebraska early on. Um, Nebraska's just got a, kind of a size advantage, and, and and both teams play really good floor defense. So it should be a pretty exciting match. Vogues, thanks for making time. I'm glad you're on the men, bud. And go check out Brandon at counterread, counterread.com, and at Brandon L. Vogel on Twitter. Vogues, we'll see you next week, bud. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Good to hear from him. We welcome in the Iron Horse, Gary Sharp. Sharpie Cranax on assignment in California. And uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that is uh, searching for. Uh, Rush ins, offensive tackles, running backs. He's on the tarmac looking to see if Will Howard lands. Is, yeah, is 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 he uh, on McCord watch? I got to get your take on on all of this. Says, what did you believe, Sharpie? Let's rewind to Monday. What did you believe yeah. was was Nebraska's reality uh, at the quarterback spot? It's it's nice to be a historical powerhouse it's nice to have matt rule and his kind of juice right and communication ability but now you, we, we fast forward to saturday i mean i can't tell you how many stream comments or emails we've gotten about he's here he's here you know it's it's <laughs> steve spurrier cable installing 2.0 again, all right? So what do you believe about Nebraska's quarterback spot right now and and, and your assessment of the McCord option here? Well, I, I think, I think first of all, Nebraska's being Nebraska. You know, Nebraska has a major brand and they have a major need. That's the biggest thing is they have a need. And so they, you know, you, you kind of feel like, this is my impression. They like what they have in 24 and they know what, a position or two, and it's not just quarterback. There are a couple other positions away from being a, a good football team. So it's your obligation as the CEO of the program to go out and fix that in the off season. And with college football free agency, and you have you are Nebraska, you have that ability to get in front of people. Now, does that mean they're going to agree to come here? No, but I do give credit to Nebraska. They've been very aggressive. And what what I, I read into this is their net isn't super large. So they've gone with a pretty concise net. So they must feel pretty good about somebody in that net, that they're getting good feedback, and that they Satterfield can relay it to Rule, who can pass it on to 1890, and they can all work together to say if this is the guy or not. Um, because if, if they had not expanded their net, then I would think one of their guys, and, and Shapin yesterday going to Mississippi State, you know, the dominoes start to fall. And so then you're like, okay, let's connect the dots. But I like what Nebraska's doing. I knew they would be aggressive. Um, I don't think they wanted it to be as public as it's been. 
But that's what happens. I mean, we were flying, we're, we're tracking planes. Uh, but I, I think it's a good sign for Nebraska. They know what they need and they know what they have. And so let's go out and fix that, whether it be Kyle McCord to Blake Shaben to even a further reach in Will Howard. Um, I like what they're doing. Now, let's see how quickly they can reel guys in because we want it to go quick. I'm still not convinced that it's going to happen here like in the next 48 hours. You know, these things take a little bit of time unless you have a previously built up relationship. Well, Gary, one of the things I said yesterday when we were talking with with Jacob Padilla was uh, I asked him the question, whenever we're talking a week from now, do you think Nebraska will have its quarterback? That's kind of the boat I'm in is by the time we get to next Thursday, next Friday, I think that's about uh, the expected time in my mind for a decision to be made in Nebraska to have their quarterback. But I want to get your thoughts broadly speaking here. What is the selling point for Nebraska to a quarterback? Is it NIL? I mean, clearly Marcus Satterfield's offense, though it's been hated on by Nebraska fans, there's got to be some level of interest from quarterbacks across the country for there to be Will Howard and Cam Ward and and, and Kyle McCord picking up your phone calls and listening. Uh, But what is your thought on what the main selling point is for this Husker team right now, and specifically this Husker offense, whenever they're going to the portal and, and talking to these quarterbacks? Well, I think let's start with NIL. Remember, Matt Rule didn't say that Nebraska is not willing to pay a million to two. He just laid it out that that's the going right now in college football. And, you know, if you're dabbling with an Ohio State quarterback, I know that their baseline is each guy gets 700 k in a car. So you're playing in that world. And that should be encouraging to people that have bashed Nebraska's NIL as at least they're going to go ahead and try and play in that world. Again, it has to be reciprocal. You can want a guy, but he's going to want you. I think it's pretty simple. If Nebraska's selling point is, hey, look at our quarterback room. You want to come in and play. Now, you know what the Kyle McCord thing was at Ohio State. He wanted a guaranteed starting spot for this upcoming year, and Ohio State wouldn't do it for him. And so then him and Day got sideways. So is that what McCord has given to Nebraska is, hey, I want to be the starter? Because I think Nebraska wants competition because they got burned last year. There was no competition for Jeff Sims. They rode Jeff Sims in the spring, the summer, and the fall, and it came back to burn them. So they're saying, no, no, we want competition. I would think, though, Kyle McCord coming to a place where, you know, he's been through the fishbowl in Columbus. That fishbowl in Lincoln isn't very far away from what you get in Columbus that he would come in and say, you know what? Yeah, I want to be the starter, but I'm going to come and improve it because I have something to prove to people that thought that even though I improved during the season in Columbus, I had a terrible last game and I just bolted on the first train out of town. But I think the selling point is you have an opportunity to come in and play, look at our quarterback room, and also look at our offense was so up and down this year. This is what we want to do on offense. I'm going to show you the last two games. I've said that for a while now. A pocket passer that's going to stretch the field, that's the kind of guy we want. We're not going to put you in a situation where you're running the option and you're going to be our leading rusher. We want a guy to stand in the pocket, be able to throw the football where you want to throw the football, not where we tell you to throw the football, and be a good decision maker. And if you feel like you can fit into that offense, then we can find a place for you. And I think that's their selling point to McCord because of what I believe that they want to run on offense. McCord fits that bill pretty well. Sharpie, the – Biggest pitch here for Nebraska is this. Uh, You'll be appreciated here, right? I mean, think about it. You could be a guy that comes in, wins a job, and elevates this program to something it's not been for a long time. That's a contender, and a contender in November in a different landscape of the Big Ten. You've lived the big games. You've beaten Penn State. You've beaten Notre Dame. You were right there uh, against uh, Michigan. Urban Myers. You know, done his breakdown saying, wasn't on you, you know, two of the tra- two of the interceptions. So Nebraska can m- move forward with McCord and say, dude, you're going to be uh, loved and adored here if you do what you're supposed to do, what you want to do coming in as a quarterback. So I think that's the angle, because if you leave Ohio State after an 11 and one run, you can't feel appreciated. I mean, especially how, with how Ryan Day talked about him well, after the Michigan game. Well, he, so here I look at McCord this way. And if McCord is the guy, I mean, I, I think, you know, you, you, you have a good feeling, but until things are done, there's always right. that opportunity. But let's, let's focus on McCord. I, I think he wasn't the right fit for Ohio State and what they want as quarterback, but he could be the right fit at Nebraska. Two things can be true. And I think that's where we are in, in this case of he wasn't the guy for Ohio State, but he was their really only option. He's not their option for what they have coming in. 
But at a place like Nebraska, he could fit in. I will tell you this. I know this because this wasn't necessarily a selling point to a quarterback, but but somebody else that they're recruiting in the 25 class is Matt Rule is a great seller, okay? He, he can quickly build up a relationship, but I think he gets his point across on where the program is and where it's going. It doesn't take a long time. And so in a, in a few amount of words, he can tell you about what they have, where they're going, and where you fit. And I think that is twofold, guys. I think that's when you're trying to recruit guys that are being recruited again or recruit new guys or talking to guys on your roster. Being up front and having a plan and being concise is very important. And I think in this case with portal guys, you, you have a plan and you don't wish you wash. Hey, we feel really good about our 24 team. And I think they do. They like their pieces, but they know they're a couple away from being a really good football team. And they're selling, hey, you're the guy that can come in and you can be part of that, not be the guy, but be part of that to help us get to the next level. And so I think rule is good in this. I think another thing that if you look at the guys that Nebraska is recruiting, I don't think rule likes recruiting guys that like recruiting. OK, and what I'm saying is, you know, some some guys are into, hey, I want to be recruited, but I don't necessarily want to play football. I, I, I like the recruiting attention. OK, and there might even be a couple of those guys on Nebraska's roster. So rule is attracted to guys that they don't just love to be recruited. They love to be recruited and then they like to talk ball. So I look at the guys that they're recruiting. These are all guys that like to talk football. OK, they like to break down football. So it's a fit for Satterfield. It's a fit for rule. And you can see why then they take the next step on, hey, are we are we in the are we in the neighborhood now? Are we having a conversation? Are you going to potentially, you know, say yes to us? And then they can continue that. But again, I like their aggressiveness. I, I think, you know what, we would all be disappointed if they just sat around and, and twiddled their thumbs for a week and hope that somebody fell in their lap. They said, no, we're Nebraska and we're going to go out and we've got something to sell because we need somebody. And it could be you. And, and they've gotten a good response. Now they just need to reel that person in. And Gary, as you kind of laid out a little earlier, with Nebraska casting a, a smaller net, if you will, with their quarterback search here in the transfer portal, with, with Kyle McCord, do you feel like he's the focus or do you feel like he's the backup plan? No, I don't think he's a backup plan. I think he's somebody that they've gotten some good mutual interest. And probably, I'm, I'm just judging off, the way Nebraska's handled recruiting, they have probably gotten more interest and a, a better conversation going with McCord. Like maybe they're, they're on the same level. And so that's why it seems like it's really picking up momentum. Um, so that's what, I, that's what I see. It's just, what does Kyle McCord want? You know, what, does he want revenge on Ohio State to say, hey, screw you guys in Columbus, look what I can do? Or does he want to go to a place where it can take his game to the next level and he can get to the NFL and he can continue to develop because there is no denying that, again, McCord was not the perfect quarterback for what Ohio State likes to do, but he was their option for 23. He did get better as the season went along. It's not like the guy was a bum from day one and he was a bum in the Michigan game. He did get better. So I don't know exactly what he wants in his next stop. Definitely to start. But is it revenge or is it, hey, I'm here to prove everybody. I'm more than Ohio State's 11 and 1. I can go to a place and I can fit in and I can be a good college quarterback. You know, those are the ones we don't know right now. But that's what, when he asked those questions, I think a rule, I think especially Matt Rule, I don't know as much about Satterfield. I think Rule is good at answering those questions on how you fit into what Nebraska offers for you. Gary Sharp, couple more minutes. It's Hale Varsity Weekend Edition. Sharpie, who does McCord remind you of? Is there a past quarterback in college or even the NFL that there's a comp out there? Um, I don't Stafford? know. Stafford. I mean, you're talking about a guy that has won an NFL, you know, won a Super Bowl. I, 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 style. I, yeah, style a little bit. You know, um, in terms of the way he throws standing in the, uh, the pocket, those kind of things. I, I could see that. I mean, I think he looks, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not overwhelmed by him, but I think for what Nebraska no. needs, it's a good fit. Um, a guy that you, so one of the problems with Nebraska's offense this year is they didn't have decision makers in the three quarterbacks where, you know, Hey, on this play, this is where the ball's got to go. Like a one, a one read offense. Um, and McCord was in an offense which was not a one-read offense. So that helps that he can be multiple and scan the field. 
Um, they, they basically need a, a, a refined quarterback who is a quarterback, not an athlete that's learning to play quarterback or a quarterback that's really just, uh, struggling with the decision making. So he looks like a lot of those quarterbacks that are pocket passers. I will tell you one thing. I know that they do not. And even though they're, they're still going to have an element of the quarterback run game, but not to the extent that they've had this past year, they do not want the quarterback having 40% of the carries. That is the last thing that they want. Um, you know, and they, they, that is something that I think caught them off surprise, but they had a transition when Harburg became the starting quarterback. They don't need that quarterback to come in and run 10 times a game or 12 times a game. They need a quarterback that's elusive if the pocket breaks down. And if they have to run the football a little bit, there's still that element. And we saw that at Ohio State that he could do that. I, I think it's a, it's a very interesting fit. I, I think people, if, if I asked you guys this, if Kyle McCord tomorrow, and this is hypothetically, Kyle McCord tomorrow said, yes, I'm coming to Nebraska. Are you guys excited for 24? Are you re-engaged in the offseason? I think if Nebraska were to land somebody of his caliber that has done it at a high level, even with a lot of help, the fact is he was still driving that bus on that offense. Yeah, I think if I'm a Nebraska fan, I'm absolutely excited because I've got a I've got a a quarterback that is going to be able to distribute the football and that'll, that'll pair with a really high level defense. That's got so much coming back. I mean, that to me is the biggest part of this where you're not going to be short staffed (laughs) on one phase of the football. Well, Uh, so, so yeah, I'm excited. I, I think McCord's probably my second favorite quarterback or, or, Tied for a second. I, I, I like Cam Ward and I think Will Howard. I like the quarterback run uh, in, in an offense, but I'm not sneezing at all, at all about Kyle McCord just because I mean, the guys, the guy was good enough to start at Ohio State and they won 11 ball games. That's, yep. that's, that's and, wow. And he's better than anything you've got in your own quarterback room. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's where I'm at with this quarterback search, Gary. Is any of those three, they're kind of the three top names as you, you list them off with Ward, Howard, and, and McCord, all better than what Nebraska has. And all of them would, if they were playing in the, the 2023 season, probably get Nebraska to eight wins. And it's hard to forecast like that. It's hard to play the what if game. But I think it's pretty reasonable to say that you can sneak three more wins into this Husker season with the quarterback that takes care of the football and is able to, to read a defense and scan the field. And Gary, with kind of that in mind, I want to get your thoughts on any of those three guys being the, the starting quarterback at Nebraska moving forward, what would your biggest concern be with the Husker offense after a guy like Howard or, or Ward or, or McCord commits? The, the name doesn't matter in the quarterback room as much. What would your, your next biggest concern on the Husker offense be? And, and I guess, do you think Nebraska has a plan to get that addressed this offseason? Uh, running back. I, I, guys, I'm not comfortable with running back. Um, you know, I, I think it was such a, a mixed bag this season. Um, there's no guarantee that Gabe Irvin's going to come back and be to the level he was. And, you know, I hope we don't get into a situation where Gabe can be a good running back, but he's just injury prone. Um, you know, Emmett Johnson emerged. There's not a lot of depth in that room. I don't think they're going to jump into the portal and grab a, a wow running back. Um, I, I like big running backs. So that would be a concern. But But here's the thing. So this whole... The, the whole two-year deal, the first two years. So Rule, shortly, was it after spring? He told the, well, when they had, I think it was when they had their post-spring meetings just to kind of get a vibe of the team. He told a lot of the upperclassmen that, hey, guys, I know that it has not been good for you. Just hang in there with us. There's going to be, there's going to be some ups and downs as we get adjusted. And you guys have been through plenty of them, but just stick with me. Trust me, we're going to make it up to you. If you can just get get us through this first year and hang with us, we're going to make strides. And I'm telling you, in year number two, we have a chance to get you to where you want to go, and that is to play in a bowl game. Now, that got sped up a little bit this past season because they were on the cusp of a bowl game. So I think Rule is going to exhaust everything he can to make sure that he rewards the guys that have been in the program for a while, that they can get the season that they want, and that's coming up in 2024. So – they're kicking tires. They're they're turning up stones. They're trying to find any guy that is out there. But running back would be a place where I think when we get through this, and you know Nebraska is definitely aggressive for a wide receiver. If you get a quarterback 
and it's a quarterback that's attractive as a wide receiver follow. We've seen that in the past. But, man, I – the running back position is probably a, a position we got to have a, a discussion about how it's coached and who's in that room because there's the great unknown, and then you throw in Ives, who you like, but you really don't know much about. And does Nebraska have a three-down back? They have that guy. He's probably going to end up at Alabama. That hurts. But do they have it in their own room right now? Gary Sharp, couple minutes with us. Weekend edition, Hale Varsity Radio, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Mark Cranach is on assignment <laughs> Out in sunny California, Sharpie, are you are you surprised when you saw the visit list by Satterfield as we deemed it the Sat World Tour 2023 this week? Are you surprised Nebraska was able to get meetings? Satterfield was able to get meetings with some of these quarterbacks. No, because they're Nebraska. Even even though they've struggled and haven't been to a bowl game since 2016, they're Nebraska, and you know there's that 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 brand still goes a long way. And so I wasn't surprised they were able to get meetings. Now, we don't know how long some of these meetings were. Some of these may have been like a quick uh, introduction and then you, you move on. But some of them may be a little bit, a little bit longer. I also found it very curious. And, you know, and, and, and rule is they had a plan. So they, they had a plan on who to attack. Um, is Satterfield is the guy out in front meeting with these, these guys, which is important because he's the guy that has the vision for the offense. He has the guy that can answer all those questions about, hey, why didn't the offense work out so well? What what why did it break down? What kind of quarterback do you want? So it's Satterfield that's out on the front line answering all those questions. But I'm not I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, it's Nebraska. And and let's be honest, they do. They do. They still have some cachet and they also have a need. That's the biggest thing. I mean, how many times how many times does a quarterback that's in the portal go because of a coordinator? It's usually because of the head coach or it's a place they can go and play. They know that you need a quarterback. I mean, those are all Nebraska's want list that would be very enticing to a quarterback. And then once you get the, okay, coach, I'm interested, that's when the dominoes behind the scenes start to fall is, hey, what's it going to – we like this guy. What's it going to take to get him? And then you go to work with all of the interior people, whether you're NIL, and you say, okay – this is what we're willing to do, and this is what we're willing to go. And you either you either like us as is, or we got to move on. And so that's, again, in this portal chasing of quarterbacks, I think Nebraska is doing a good job because they're upfront and honest. This is what we can offer. You either, you either like us or, or not, but we're not going to do the dancing part. We're, we got to move on because we need a quarterback. And in the past, I think what has hurt Nebraska – not just in the portal, but in recruiting, is they hang around too long. They don't have a vibe if a guy is just stringing them out or they're interested. That's why I think the McCord thing has gotten a lot of legs is because I do believe he is generally interested in what Nebraska has to offer and what his place is in the football program. So Nebraska is dancing with him a little bit longer. When you talk about what Nebraska has to offer, Gary, what specifically do you mean by that? You've got uh, to be the quarterback at the University of Nebraska is a big deal. You've got some NIL. I mean, at, that's to be the quarterback. You just had a, a quarterback at Nebraska who got a nice NIL bump. Um, but, you know, Kyle McCord would be on a different level than Jeff Sims. Um, and I think you're playing in the Big Ten. You're playing on the biggest stage. You're in one of the power conferences. And you are at a place like Nebraska. And I also think, guys, quarterbacks, man, they're some alphas. You don't think every quarterback, because Jeff Sims thought the same thing, and I'm sure Nebraska's selling point was that to him as well. Can you imagine Kyle or Jeff or Will, Cam, uh, Sam? If you're the guy that comes in here and turns things around, you're set. You're absolutely set in your football career and your career at Nebraska. Some guys love that. Some guys shy away from that. I'm thinking a guy that's been in that fishbowl would go, You're right. I've seen it before. I also like the fact about McCord. I want to add this one other thing. In any of these quarterbacks that they're pursuing, they're coming from winning programs. Okay? So they've been in a culture of winning. They know what it takes to win Monday through Friday and then on Saturday. So these guys have been around winners because that's what Nebraska still has not been able to do is to find enough winners. Okay? They got guys that are winners, but there's a difference between winning and winners. And guys that are coming from programs where they're the key number one person that are winners, I like that because I think that rubs off. You know, 
That was one of the things I don't think we talked enough about Sims. We talked about all of his turnover issues, but he was at a place where Georgia Tech wasn't great. The guys that Nebraska are pursuing, for the most part, and remember, Shapin is off the board and Baylor's struggled the last couple of years. But the most part, these guys have all won in their college career. And I think that's important to what Nebraska needs in 2024. Gary Sharp with this weekend edition. Sharp, he'll get you out on this. I think the point you made about the reckoning, right, that that personality, that that, that legend status. I want to become a legend in Lincoln at a, a program as storied as Nebraska is uh, very attractive to, to some quarterback personalities. I mean, yep. there there's big ego, and that's all right if you if you deliver. Likelihood of a second portal quarterback uh, getting questions about Levitt as an option because of his four four years, the the, the Chuba factor, uh, and uh, I wanted to get your take here on the likelihood if you do get McCord, and again it can go zero to sixty yeah. with with the uh, the timeline here. Fleming, I mean, is 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 it something you would bet on? Uh, if you get him a cord, you can also land a Fleming. So there's a lot in yeah. there, but a second portal, the Chubba factor, and then Fleming as we wrap. So I think they really like Purdy. And, you know, we have to we have to wait to see what Chubba wants. But I think comments that Rule made after the season about Chubba and his high ceiling, I think they want to see what he's like with true development. You don't get true yeah. development during the fall. You get it during the spring and the summer when you can pay more attention to quarterbacks and you're not preparing for a game. So I think Chubb is in the mix here. Ideally, I'd love to have two. I'd like to have an older guy and a younger guy. But at this point, Nebraska needs needs a quarterback. You know, they need a guy that they think can lead them to victories. So I don't think you're going to be really choosy. Now, the part about Fleming, um, you know, there is the connection to McCord. The Fleming is, I, I still think, learning how to be a wide receiver. He's a, he's a guy that's not going to blow the top off the defense. And, man, he's been besieged by injuries at a place where they recruit elite wide receivers, and he hasn't been able to keep up. So maybe a change of scenery will help him. He's been hurt by injuries. He's a great perimeter blocker. He's a great kid. He's a great locker room guy. He kind of fits that culture that Rule is looking for. But maybe just a change of scenery would help somebody like him. But ideally, a quarterback will attract a wide receiver. Because all of these guys have spent a lot of time around each other, whether they played together in Columbus or they've been out on the trail, you know, when they were, were high school kids and they were being recruited. So I think if you were able to get that that quarterback, then maybe a wide receiver, and it could be Fleming, it could be somebody else, would say, Yeah, man, I'll go catch footballs from them. One other thing, they are selling, um, they are selling the young wide receivers to quarterbacks. They're saying, Hey, it's not like we have a bunch of old guys in our wide receiver room. We have some young guys that when the ball is thrown properly to them, they can blow the door off of things. And so that is appealing as well. If you look at a guy like Jalen Lloyd or a Coleman or a Bell or a Doss, they don't have any tape on Bell, but they can sell that and say, hey, we've got a nice collection. And then, oh, by the way, we like our tight end room. Look who's here and look who is coming. So they've done a good job of selling. I I give them credit for the first week. They've gotten in front of some key quarterbacks. Now it is. Can you close? Can you get the guy that you want? Not the guy that falls into your laps because the dominoes start to fall and they pick somewhere else and it's like, oh, this guy, his only choice is Nebraska. Can they close and get the guy that they want? Gary, I want to get your quick thought. I know we said we'd get you out, but you're, what you said about Chubba kind of got me thinking because I, I think about if, and it's a big if, a lot of hurdles to clear, but if you bring in a guy like McCord and then maybe Levitt's there too, and then Kalen. You look at Chuba in a quarterback room with those guys, and he, he stylistically starts feeling like the odd man out, right? Is that just me in terms of how Chuba plays quarterback versus how a guy like Kyle McCord, a guy like Kalen, a guy like Levitt? Stylistically, is he still a, a fit for the Husker quarterback room if that is the room? Stylistically, if he develops as a quarterback, he's right there. But I think he's still pretty raw as a quarterback. And there's a lot of what you saw at Florida State, you saw at Nebraska. I, I want to see Chuba with a full dedicated, meaningful, you're, you're in the mix spring where he's healthy. He doesn't have to worry about injuries. And you're going to say, hey, you're the true quarterback. And this is what we're going to do. And then we can make a determination. Um, there's another thing is if you were in that quarterback room and you are surprised that they're recruiting quarterbacks, man, you're lost. And I got nothing, I got nothing for you because that was pretty clear as day that, hey, 
we need help at this position. So if you're going to be upset that we're going out and we're, we're recruiting all these other guys, I got nothing for you, but I want you to compete. I think that's the biggest thing. I think when they get to spring, they want a full-on true competition. Hey, this staff gets, in my opinion, gets a mulligan because they failed on the Sims thing. They put everything into Sims, and Sims was all spring, all summer, all fall, and they didn't pay much attention to the other quarterbacks until they were forced to. They got competition in spring, at least hopefully, and then that'll determine who the best quarterback is. So buckle up. This is kind of fun, isn't it? We're tracking flights again, and they don't involve coaches. They involve yeah, it's, actual it's, players. It's, it's a different animal. But, yeah, I mean, it's not that Nebraska fans aren't, aren't used to this this recon. Uh, totally are. But, it's yeah, now it involves a player. And, yeah, I mean, you got numbers floating out there, Sharpie, of 1.6 million, 1.7. And I know that <laughs> you talked to – some of the older school Nebraska fans, they <laughs> choke on that, but it is the new normal. That's what's going to going to happen uh, to, did, to get me, a, to get a, to get a potential difference maker. As Elijah sits back down, um, Elijah Schmidt, just brought up, you know, some numbers that are being thrown out there in terms of 1.6, 1.7. And, and we don't know, you know, I, I haven't heard, I, I've seen it, but I'm not, I haven't got it confirmed that they've offered McCord, but there's, there's all kinds of, you know, attention on both sides, is why does it matter what they offer to a quarterback? Why does it matter to us what they offer to a quarterback? That's not our money. That's what they're doing. If, if they believe that that quarterback is the guy for them, then all right, go for it. I, I think and, and, the, and, then, and, I, then, and then we wait for the season to play out, and then we go, eh, let's talk about that money that you spent. I think, I think it is – very Nebraskan, and we've all been here for a number of years, and a lot of us are born and raised here. So there, there is a appreciation for the hard work this state puts in for their finances. All right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that, and that, okay. And th- there is that aspect of it, and you don't want to set that that on fire. <laughs> yeah. And there there is some some remorse from last year's investment. There's the worry. There's the worry if it works out yeah. and Nebraska's knocking on Indy a year from now, Nebraska's in the mix in uh, in in November and, and they're playing meaningful games and they got a quarterback that can win some of those meaningful games. Nebraska yeah. fans will continue to give till it hurts. They just don't want it to blow up in their face yeah. saying, "Well, Nebraska just Pissed away 1.7 on a quarterback to go five yeah. and seven. I mean, that's the that's the worry. And it's all about it's all about, isn't it, Elijah, paying the correct player? I don't care yes. what they spend, but it's all about the correct player, whether that be a quarterback, rush in, running back, wide receiver. It's making the wise choice of the correct player. Um, you know, that, that's that's where Nebraska is learning. This is a new world for rule. It's it's red wine nails it in our stream chat here. I don't care what they spend if there's a W behind it. And I think that's where Husker fans are at. <laughs> if it's not the money. It's the concern that the investment won't pay off. And you get two, three years down the road. Now there's the, the powers that be in Nebraska being w- less willing to compete in the NIL world because their investments aren't paying off. I think that's the concern right now. It's almost the, the PTSD from Husker fans seeing what the last couple of years have been kind of low on faith saying, why are we going to go spend this much money on a quarterback if they go five and seven, that money's not going to be there in three years. And now where is Nebraska in college football? I think that's the concern you get yeah. from Husker fans, that this money is not always going to be there if the wins don't start rolling in from the, that money, that NIL investment. Nebraska's greatest resource is the, the people who've loved this program for decades. And they have given and given and will continue to give, right? I mean, there's been donations. There's going to be donations for the, the, the Go Big project. There's donations for the South End Zone development. And then when it comes to NIL and boosters and folks that are friends of the program, man, they, they feel a part of it. And yeah. I think that's really, I think that's, it, that's cool. Isn't that's really this, cool. Isn't this because you got two things running at the same time? This whole NIL thing is new to us. Mm-hmm. And don't kid yourself. Remember, Rule didn't say that Nebraska wouldn't play in that world. He was just let everybody know how much it costs. And then you've seen in the last couple of days a more aggressive 1890 
social media stuff, ramping it up, help us out. Rule doesn't want to come out and do like other coaches have said, hey, time to swipe your credit card. He has just let us know and then let somebody else take care of it because Rule is into reward, retain, develop. So this is kind of a new world of, oh, my God, we got to pay a lot of people. But don't you think you guys, because you have the NIL and the go and and then the stadium project running at the same time, doesn't this split off into the demographic of the NIL world of paying for wins is maybe more towards the younger fan, the comfort of being in a stadium that's 100 years old, more towards the older fan? Because, no, totally. because what, if, what if your parents were given the option of, would you like to pay, and there's no guarantee, would you like to drop some coin to help us get a quarterback or drop, drop us some coin so when you're sitting in the South Stadium, your ass isn't squeezed together that you feel like a sardine when you leave the ballpark? Well, I'll say this: the if I had to, to pick and choose, and we're we're going to raid Junior's <laughs> piggy bank because he's the only one in the house that has any money. Uh, I uh, you could put up with your ass getting squeezed <laughs> if you're watching a good quarterback play, <laughs> right? You'll endure. You could even <laughs> argue being packed in like a sardine watching a good quarterback play just makes it more exciting, more more reason for you to get out of your chair and and, uh, and cheer. Right? I I just I just love the fact that I mean I embrace it and adapt or die, and there is a new Big Ten cover charge. There, it's not new, but it's uh, it's it's somewhat new for Nebraska fans to you know kind of gulp. Yep, that's what that's what this yep. new new football world order is, and it's the sayonara from four to twelve. Be be a contender in the playoff. I don't know how often you'll win the Big Ten, but it really doesn't matter, man, because if you're in that top three of the Big Ten, you're knocking on the playoff yeah. door. Yeah, this, this has been a great conversation, but and it all comes back to the bottom line, is in 2024, Nebraska needs to win football games. Yes. And there's at least a sense of urgency of, yeah, five and seven, wasted four opportunities to get to a bowl game. 24 is now different. It's taken on a different tone. We've got yes. to find a way to win football games to add to what we already have. And I can tell you, especially on one side of the ball, they took care of the white thing. They like the defense. They're, they're ramping it up to make sure they can shore up what they have on offense, which, which is on campus and could be potentially coming on campus. I like the fact that they are well aware of the angst of people, that it's time to win. No more of this. And they got close and they got a taste of it. Now they're trying to find that thing to get them over the hump instead of sitting back and going, hey, you know what? We had still five and seven. We had a nice year. No. Five and seven was not a good year at the end of the day because your season isn't still going on. And so I like the sense of urgency and the wide net and the aggressiveness. And we'll see what it leads to this upcoming week and then what it leads to elsewhere because they also might not be done with their high school recruiting. You know, we are, what, 11 days away from signing day. They may find a high school player or two that is out there. And you've seen they dropped the defensive line offer the other day, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, you know, they may be working behind the scenes. Maybe there's a flip out there or something like that for a high school kid. So they're definitely not done before the 20th of December or the first part of January when the portal ends. I love it. This is this is free agency at its best, but it's also a program that knows they got to win. They know they got to win in 24 and how they're going to get there. It's Gary Sharp with us, the Iron Horse Weekend Edition. Gary, do, you, do you have a, a second? I have another another yeah. thought for you because you brought it up and we didn't really dive into it, but you you mentioned 1890s kind of public presence this week. And a reminder to check out Cornhead Lager by Cross Strain Brewing. 1890. That is the 1890 great, Collective. Hey, Doug and the guys at Cross Strain, that is a great beer. You can get it at Pinnacle Bank Arena if you're there for the Michigan State game tomorrow. Are you going, Sharpie? Or you got a I'm game in, yourself? I'm in Corpus Christi, Texas right now. Uh-huh. So you're warm. So no. I love it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's 81 here today. But, but Gary, from... Uh, <laughs> Not here. <laughs> Gary, from, from Cornhead Lager in this 1890 presence out there, you can feel it from, from the collective trying to, to put themselves out there to the general Husker fan, not just make it the, the donors of Substance Collective, but kind of make it yep. more of a, a general Nebraska collective. And I've, I've done the math on this, right? I mean, if you venture to say there's probably what? 60, 65,000 tickets in Memorial Stadium held by season ticket holders every single yeah. year. I think that's a conservative estimate. 
you divide that by two because season ticket holders, you bring in somebody with you. So we'll call it 32,000. If you have all of those members making a $20 donation to the collective every single month times 12 months, you're looking at $7.5 million. Is that the future of Nebraska's NIL to make it more about the, the general fan than to make it about the donors of substance? Because $7.5 uh, million, that's a war chest. So that's a great point. So when NIL started, and I asked this question, and they weren't really interested in the Gary Sharps, the Chris Schmitz, and the Elijah Herbals of the world that don't have 100 k sitting around. But you know what? For our alma mater, we're thinking, hey, you know what? I got $200, $500. They weren't necessarily into that at the beginning because they were, they were searching the, the, Ella, you know, the, the white whale to get that big, big, big <laughs> check. Now I think it's adjusted where they want the NIL at Nebraska to be a grassroots thing that includes everybody. You might not be able to drop a mill, but you know what? If you can drop a little bit, you feel like you're engaged and you're part of it. And so I think that's where at Nebraska it's transitioned um, a little bit. I also think, guys, don't you think the same thing? Is there still needs to be an educational process on how NIL works from the fan perspective? We know how it's working behind the scenes. Rules got rules to gotta lead 1890 down the path. 1890 just can't be, you know, flying out to wherever to recruit quarterbacks. It has to start with the head man, and he says, this is what we probably need as a package. Go get them. It has to start at the top. So we're starting to understand that process a little bit more. But don't you think, guys, that there still needs to be an educational process of how it works for the general fan, how they can become involved? Because Elijah no, brings up a great question about, you know, what about, what about the normal fan? Because uh, it does come across initially as you got to have a lot of money to be involved in NIL. Why not educate the fans on – you can be a hundred, two hundred dollar person that you know donates, and you you, you feel like you've made an impact. Well, it, it, all goes, all, it all goes it all goes to the student athlete. So that's another yes. thing that I think they need to to put out there is it's not going through a bunch of chain of command. It goes to the student athlete. No, that that clarity would would be welcomed, and I think the. Uh, different tiers of, of giving yeah. are acceptable. And it's, I mean, all of us have attended church in our life and you know that there's different places, your, 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 your church and when weekly offering can go if you do weekly offering. So it's not, I would, I would think the off ramps are, are similar to, Volleyball, you know, different programs yeah. first and foremost, and uh, a, a, a little, a, you give a little bit or you give a lot, it, it all goes to you know, better the student athlete experience. That's what's <laughs> that's what's really cool, right? <laughs> Giggling at me. Well, no, I see uh, what Dion's comment. Yeah, I can't pay the heat bill, but give on to NIL. <laughs> Your ten percent tithe going to eighteen ninety. <laughs> give till it hurts. Yeah, hey, I mean, I like we, we, it's too bad we just can't. I mean, we, we should just go back to the old days of guys walking around with cash and just handing out cash. McDonald's bags. Yes. <laughs> you know, you know, Satterfield leaves the room, and here comes some jabroni in with a bag full of cash, and he's like, "Hey, Cam, you remember GBR?" Yeah. <laughs> How about, how about this idea from Moonbot, though? Pizza's here. The 1890 lotto tickets. Max pay out of $500,000 to the winner. You got to buy to get it. He says fans will buy $10 million worth of tickets every year for stocking stuff. It almost feels like the old, the old raffle, the, the 50-50 mm-hmm. raffle you get at a lot of sporting events where 50% goes to charity, 50% goes to the, the fan who wins the raffle. How about that? But for NIL, that's not a bad idea, Moonbot. Well, here's, here's the other question. With gambling legal... I mean, are there? I, I guess are there are there certain businesses you wouldn't take donations from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a, 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 a portion of this cover goes back to yeah. the athlete. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a wild world, and we don't know how much longer this is going to last after what sure. was proposed by the NCAA. But it's the world we live in right now, and and sometimes if you want something, you got to compete, you got to pay the freight, but you got to pay the correct people. I know people on the stream have been saying, what about an offensive guard? What about an offensive tackle? You know, Nebraska got involved in the offensive line last year. They just weren't able to close the deal, and then they weren't, you know, they got outbid for a Walter Rouse-type offensive yeah. tackle, which would have been a you know a 12-game starter this year. Um, it's about paying the right people, and we'll see if Nebraska pays the right quarterback this year. And I just I think you have to I think you have to go, man, at least Nebraska's involved. You yes, know, they're, at, they're at least they're not just the sitting back. 
Yes. Yeah, they are playing the game because everybody else is. And if you're not playing the game, you're going to get passed by. And they do not want to get passed by in 24 because they feel like they, they can be a winning football team. Now, does that mean six, seven wins? They just know that they can be a winning football program in 2024, and they must be. I, I think there's, they know, but there's also the part they, they, they must be a winning football program. It's Gary Sharp, weekend edition, a little overtime with Sharpie. Gary, enjoy Corpus Christi, bud. We'll catch up with you next week, and thanks for jumping in. Fun hey, talk this, after, this morning. I always love it. Let me, uh, Elijah, what happens tomorrow at Pinnacle Bank Arena? I said yesterday Nebraska wins 69-67. I'm going to stick with Not that. Not a shot in hell. I don't think either team has reason to think they're going to win this game. Both of them are sputtering. I mean, it's a toss-up in my book. I'm going to keep the uh, the fans of this show happy, though, and say Nebraska basketball wins 69-67. Whew. That is a, that is a desperate basketball what's the lo- What's the line tomorrow? Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised like Michigan State. By three or four? four? Yeah. 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 That feels right. I just think too much party. What a difference a week can make. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> last Saturday, Fred Fred's 7-0, and oh, and you're like, ah, oh, the vibe is a little bit different. And then the Creighton game happens. Okay, what's your response? And then Wednesday night happens, and you go, wow, there's too many things that look familiar to the previous four years. Are we in uh-oh before we ever flip the calendar to 24? I, the, the winning is important tomorrow. Winning and being a team that's not going to get bullied. I, that was such a letdown Wednesday night. I mean, that's, you, got, you got bullied by a team that punched you, and you didn't respond, and they just kept punching you. And that was, well, that was startling to me. You need your all preseason Big Ten stud to, to make it down and back on offense and defense and not, not look for calls. Yeah, I, I need I need the 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 being demonstrative to to be put in the back pocket and just play ball. Yeah, tomorrow will be uh, an important game for Nebraska basketball because they're being squeezed right now. And you know what happens? You find out the true identity of a team when they get squeezed. So who in that locker room takes on the role of a Greasel and a Walker and says, "I'm a cut stopper. We're not letting this stuff go." They, they don't have one. Yeah, we got off to a good start. We're not going to let this go down the drain. And so who's that guy? That's what I fear, Schmitty, is last year they had those guys, and then they kind of collectively came together because they were forced to with injuries. I don't know. There's, there, there's a lot of moving parts right now, but you're absolutely right. I hate Tominaga's body language. Absolutely yep. hated it against Creighton. I thought, you know, maybe some of the offseason accolades had started to get to him. I don't see guys that are incorporating him in the offense or vice versa. They just are – the last two games have just been a weird chemistry thing. Man, I don't care who, who is part of the experiment tomorrow. They need to find five guys and put the ball in the hoop and win a basketball game by one or two. Uh, if Elijah's right, 69-67, you wake up Monday morning, you go, okay, now on to Kansas State. But if they don't, then you wake up and go, wow, is, is Trev going to have to, you know, th- that conversation comes back in it, and it becomes unfortunately real with still a ton of the season to go. Well, no, if, yeah, if, they, much, if they win, too much of the season. if they win, it's on to Kansas State. If they lose, it's on to spring football, right? Well, I, I mean, I don't want to say it because there's a lot of the season to go, but damn, there's there's too many things that look familiar. Yes. You know? And so that's why I, I'm, 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 I'm curious to see how this team reacts tomorrow because Michigan State, hey, Michigan State is in a sense of urgency as well. Sharpie, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Mama and Junior are going tomorrow. Uh, Coach Izzo signed a, a hat for Carson for his birthday. Got that sent. So it's uh, they'll be wearing green. And uh, that's just their choice, unfortunately. <laughs> so. well, you're, but to, to, to everybody that knows, your son has been a Michigan State basketball fan for a long Since time. He's like five years yeah. old. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. It's all good. Sharpie, enjoy Texas, bud. Thanks for jumping on and an extended conversation. Always appreciate you. Hey, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you next week. All right, there he is. The Iron Horse, Gary Sharp. It's Elijah Herbal, Chris Schmidt. Podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, where you can find us. Hail Varsity Radio, Hail Varsity Weekend Edition. And as, as always, subscribe to the Hail Varsity YouTube channel at Herbal Essence for Elijah Herbal on Twitter, Chris Schmidt at Schmidt underscore radio. 
and uh, follow the show as well at H Bar City Radio. And we'll be back at you but, but, Monday at four. Before Go we ahead. get out of here, I'd just like to note we may not have been on time this morning, but I think the wait was well worth it. Brandon, Gary, both phenomenal. Of course they are. They're I, always phenomenal. I got an extra thirty minutes of sleep, so that was awesome. I don't even know what happened this like. You understand, like you, know, you and I were both texting last night at two a.m. because I had kind of a Christmas party slash ugly sweater party, and got home and fell asleep. And I was up by I think seven seven fifteen. I mean, I was swore at at seven fifteen because my alarm was going. Well, the the e true Hollywood stories. It's not like it's unusual for us to have a late night on a Friday before a Saturday morning show. That's not that's not out of uh, the the regular that's, for us. That's, that's normal for us. What was strange was my phone did the thing this morning. You know whenever your phone dies, then it powers back up and you haven't unlocked it yet, it doesn't have access to your contacts list? You, you know what I'm talking about? Where yeah, 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 like, yeah. You, you called me this morning, and I did not say Chris Schmidt on my phone. It had your phone number, which I will not say here on the air. Um, it's funny because we were just talking about it a couple days ago, so like whenever I saw that number, I went, I know exactly whose phone number that is. That's concerning. <laughs> but what's weird is is I get Then that. you look at your watch and scream an F-bomb. <laughs> and that's the thing is, like, my phone was fully charged. So it's not like it didn't charge overnight. Just something weird happened. My alarm never went off. Thank God for you calling me. We made it in here. We we uh, we knocked out a phenomenal show. And, man, was there plenty to talk about today. So appreciate no, everyone hanging out good. with us and uh, and getting up early or maybe a little later than, than usual on a Saturday morning. But hanging out with us. And uh, we'll be back at it Monday, as you said. Talk to you at four. Thanks for tuning in to Hale Varsity. See ya.